You're probably wondering whether mirroring is worth your time. Today, I'm gonna share you a surprising truth about it. You're probably watching this because you've realized that you didn't win the genetic lottery when it comes to jaw development and facial aesthetics. Or perhaps you're looking at your dad and you're like, wait a minute, why does that guy have an incredibly chiseled jaw and very well developed face, but why don't I have that. Maybe you've already done some research. Maybe you've realized that perhaps it was some unfortunate habits in your childhood, like poor tongue posture, incorrect swallowing pattern, lack of chewing and mouth breathing that led you to not realize the gifts that were living inside of your genome when it comes to jaw development. So now you've heard about Mui and you're wondering whether it could solve your problems, whether it could improve your jawline but you're pretty skeptical at the same time because let's face it, all these AI editing tools are getting pretty advanced these days and you could do some crazy shit without any kind of Photoshop skills. So it can be pretty debatable and hard to know whether all these impressive before after photos you see online are real or total bullshit. I want to tell you something right now that is going to absolutely change the course of your life. Are you ready for it? I hope so. Here it comes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether mewing works or not. You don't have a choice. If we forget about the term mewing for a second and we appreciate what we're actually talking about here, we're talking about holding the tongue in its natural resting posture. To call it mewing is actually a little bit preposterous and it doesn't make any sense. Like if I hold my arm in this position, that's called external fucking rotation and not I'm puttering because I came up with holding it like this. That's absolutely ridiculous. Mewing is completely synonymous with having the tongue in its natural resting position. That is all. And the reason why you don't have a choice but to mew for the rest of your life is that the tongue takes up a lot of space in the back of your airway. So this is your tongue, right? This is your mouth. This is your teeth right here. And this is the roof of the mouth, okay? So when we got the tip of the tongue in the spot where you say, when you say the letter N, the tongue goes there. And then we carpet the rest of the tongue against the roof of the mouth with a little bit of suction. Hey, you're mewing right now. Watch this. This is the back of the airway. This is your nasal cavity right here. It turns out that the back portion of the tongue makes up the floor of your nasal cavity and it has an influence on the shape of the back of the airway. If you're not mewing and your tongue is on the floor of the mouth, watch what happens to my wrist when it goes from there to there. The wrist actually moves that way. And that is exactly in a very simplified version of what happens in your upper airway when your tongue collapses on the floor of the mouth. The tongue is going to collapse further into the airway, which is going to reduce your available airway size. So now breathing becomes significantly more difficult if you're not mewing. And this is true during the day, but especially true during the night time, because watch this. This is your upper airway, okay? Under normal circumstances, when you inhale, the muscle diaphragm that sits inside here, the thorax, when you inhale, the diaphragm descends, and this creates negative air pressure inside the lungs, which sucks air into the lungs. That's how you inhale. This negative air pressure and the air coming into the body is creates a this tendency for the airway to collapse in on itself. But because of the fact that life is good and nothing is obstructing the airway, the airflow itself will help to keep the airway open. However, when life is not good, when something, in particular the tongue, is sitting further back in the airway, that is going to make the airway space smaller. Now, when you inhale, your diaphragm is still gonna descend. It's gonna create that inward pull of air into the body. And now, as there is this negative air pressure pulling air into the body, but there's not as much air keeping the airway space open, guess what's gonna happen? The walls of the airway are going to vibrate. That's how you snore. And then guess what? It's very likely that at some point, even without you even realizing it, at some point, your airway will collapse completely. That is called 
obstructive sleep apnea. Apparently it's completely normal these days that that happens from zero to five times. I've got experience from five times per hour. I'm gonna tell you that it absolutely destroys your life quality. There's a lot of people probably in your life too who are waking up 30, 40, upwards 50 times an hour because of the collapse of their airway. Those people are not feeling good. Those people are not thinking straight. Their life quality is absolutely shattered. So this is a big, big deal. You gotta focus on this stuff. I only have personal experience from five wake-ups per hour and even that was totally devastating for my life quality compared to what it is right now. My focus was shit. My attention was really short. I had no energy. I was always tired, really hard to get out of bed in the morning, low libido, always grumpy. Just the overall a really shitty human being to be around. You can verify all this from my fiance, by the way. And it's incredible that she stayed with me through that because he was having a seriously negative impacts on our relationship. So let me tell you what I've done to solve my breathing problems while I sleep. I spent thousands of dollars and years in researching how to improve your breathing quality while you sleep without a CPAP, without orthodontics, or without surgery. I dove into the worlds of breathing optimization for health and performance, or facial myology, physiotherapy, and then of course combine that with everything that I know of my field, which is strength and conditioning. And the three tools that I've used the most to improve my sleep quality are carbon dioxide tolerance increasing breathing exercises that make your breathing slower, deeper, and teach you how to breathe through your nose unconsciously. Orofacial myofunctional exercises. These are exercises for your face, for your tongue, and for your upper airway muscles that will directly attack the root cause of the problem because now your tongue is less likely to collapse into the airway because it's stronger and you know how to hold it in the proper posture. And then also those airway muscles themselves are more resilient to airway collapses. And then finally, the implementation of sleep hygiene practices. There are a lot of things that we take for granted in our modern world that are directly impairing your ability to get to as deep and restorative sleep as you could. I've put all these tools into the Breathe Sleep Perform program, which comes with the change your life or get your money back guarantee. So if you're ready to stop combing these random corners of YouTube and you want to have an actionable plan that you can follow from tonight to feel better tomorrow and then develop habits that will actually change the entire course of your life, jump on board. I can't wait to see you on the inside. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.